Good morning. Welcome back to Erasmus TV. Tomorrow, the university elections will kick off. Students can cast their votes for the university council. Here with me is Elora Sen. She's one of the candidates for the elections. And joining me on Skype is Denise Korthals Altis. She is from the Central Electoral Committee. And also joining us is Hans van der Berg. He is the chair of the council. Very welcome also to the both of you. Thank you. Good, Good morning, Hans. To start with you, you're not up for election. Uh, you're not even a student. And, well, actually, the chair of the council, the uh, chair position isn't filled by elections. For those who have really no idea at all, what well, role plays the, the university council within the university? Um, well, it's absolutely true that as a chair you're not electable. Um, you're appointed by the uh, council itself and the university council is part of the checks and balances of the executive board. This means that the council has to give consent on issues such as budgets or the strategy or advise on issues such as the numerous fixes or convergence projects with other institutions. But most important, they are elected representatives of the Erasmian community who can take initiative to bring about the change they want to see, for instance, on sustainability. The University Council strives to create an environment where Erasmians of all levels can excel and connect through learning and development. The purpose of the University Council is to represent the community and create an inspirational and sustainable work and study environment. Yes, and Elora, you're one of the students who want to fight for this all, but now you have to, well, campaign online due to the coronavirus. Is, is that going to make it more difficult for you? Um, I'm not, well, I think it's definitely lucky now that the campaigning is obviously happening after we've been doing everything online for a while, like, you know, all our classes and everything. So I've definitely gotten used to online platforms, and I've seen a lot of other kind of like committee groups picked, like my own university college recently had our own elections for our own student board and like student advisors. So I kind of like got to see what they did and got a little bit of idea, but it's definitely something not done before. So it'll definitely be very interesting. Yeah, and I said fight because there are 38 candidates and that's well, for this university, a surprisingly large amount. Uh, last year there were fewer students than seats, so there were no elections needed. Um, Denise, do you have perhaps an, well, an explanation for this larger amount of candidates? Well, I do not have uh, a special explanation for that. Um, I can only guess that it's easier to do it uh, digitally. Another explanation I do not have. No. Sorry. <laughs> Hello, do you have some thoughts on this? Because you are also in the council right now yeah so perhaps you just did a lot of work very well <laughs> last year um on how it's easier to campaign yeah. online no, no on, on why there are more candidates this oh, year yes um well i think one job is us as the council i think we've really worked hard on the identity of it and we had a committee group this year really working on not just um like making the council well more more known within the university, but also like kind of a template for the future. And I think also just on our social media and everything, we really kind of promoted the council really well, um, like throughout the year and coming up to the elections. And anytime we had like, you know, a uh, event or something, we really promoted it. So I think big pat on the back to the council members of this year for really doing a good job with that. Mm. Denise, you do know everything about, well, the elections itself. Um, how can students vote? Because it's only students who can vote this year. Yes, uh, students are only elected for one year. So uh, this year we have only the students uh, to, um, to candidate themselves. And um, they can vote uh, through our electoral uh, system. That's a computerized electoral program. And they have, all the students have received, all the candidates have received uh, an email last Friday in which they um, are explained how to vote. And um, there is a link in this email with, um, uh, to the website, to the electoral system. And um, they only have to uh, 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 link on a, on a button and they can choose the candidate of their choice. It's very easy. Yes. So people couldn't vote on you, 
and you're running well for your second year, but it must take a lot of work, especially if you're also studying. Is it easy to combine because you're doing a second year? It must be easy. Yeah. Or doable. I mean, I think it's definitely with the university council. Like, there's obviously, um, you know, certain things that everyone needs to do and work on, but also it's like, as a student council member, you mm -hmm. can take on more responsibilities or more roles that suits you and also what you're interested in. I mean, several members of our council actually weren't studying as well. They were kind of taking a year um, and they were doing other things as well. So then those members definitely, you know, were like heads of committee groups, took on a lot more. But I think um, as with any other process, it's also like you learned how to handle it and you learn to balance it. Um, it definitely, you know, helps with your organization skills. And I think I found like a rhythm with it. Like it definitely obviously made my studies, you know, I had to be more efficient with it, but I think it's still definitely manageable. And it's also really interesting, the work and it's you know, very like fulfilling in that way as well. Is it something you are really proud of, something you achieved last year? Yeah, I mean, last year was my first year on the council and I think for me as an international student as well and coming, I go to the university college, so like that's a separate can campus. I think definitely the first half or a couple months of the council was definitely a learning process for me and kind of learning how it worked and how committee groups work. So it was kind of like, I really learned to love my role during the year. And it was kind of like halfway through the year, like it just clicked like with the other members and really working with them and kind of like during meetings, like making decisions, like being really proud or really like you say something that you think is really good and really good critique and you know, other members look at you and you're like, feel really good about what you're doing there. So that really kind of felt for me like more later in the year. And that's also a big reason why I really want to, you know, run for re-elections because I've gotten that feeling and I really want to like now feel it from the beginning, for, like next year now. Mm. Hans, uh, do you think that the well, position of the University Council will change due to this current crisis we're in? Well, obviously the position changes because you are in a completely different situation where you have to do everything online. That's, first of all, a new way of doing meetings and communicating with the executive board and with policymakers. But on the other hand, um, the executive board needs to make difficult decisions and sometimes very quickly. And this means that as a university council, you have to find a balance between uh, flexibility and representing the community. And we work now on issues such as binding study advice and a hard cut for a master's, which we didn't before. And it also means that sometimes you need to be very strong uh, in your position on certain issues, such as work pressure for both students and staff towards the executive board. So yeah, the role changes over time and definitely with a certain uh, crisis as we have now. Mm. And uh, you're, well, you're, you're mentioning all kind of big topics, actually, topics for students, well, employees, and for the both of them. Um, are the candidates thinking differently about this? So should people probably prepare before their vote? I think they should, I should you ha at least have to read what the candidates stand for, because it's important that you know who is going to represent you and what they are going to focus on this year. Um, it's important that the students vote, because these are the people who are going to represent you in this most central body of the university. And it gives them a strong mandate by which they can support their position. And secondly, because these elections uh, or elected representatives discuss and debate important decisions such as those budgets and numerous fixes, as I mentioned. But they also work on projects of, for instance, the higher education quality agreements. Um, and the past academic year with the corona crisis, with the email investigations, with the interim positions at the executive board, only shows how important this body is. And you, as a student, are represented by those you elect. So if you want to make sure that they represent your feelings, your opinions, your issues, the things you think about, you really need to read what they stand for. Yes. So, Elora, you're not the only candidate. You can find the other candidates all, and all their profiles at MyUR, but also you will find them at the social media of Erasmus magazine. Starting tomorrow, you have exactly one week to vote. So don't forget to vote. And don't forget to watch Erasmus TV tomorrow. Thank you for watching.